Happy Thursday. We are back for our second show uh, that we've started back on this new so night. We've revamped and, and brought yeah. back, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we're excited to be here at the historic Scott County Jail. You're locked in for the next hour with myself and uh, my co-host, Dr. Christy Sumner. Hey, everybody. And our little mascot, Sally. She'll be joining us tonight, obviously. Can't be left out of the limelight. Um, but we've got a, a really cool show tonight. We're very excited about our guests. We think it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a great uh, uh, amount of things to talk about tonight. Um, and uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. Yeah. And so if you joined us last week, we talked a little bit about what we were doing in the months that we were off because, I mean, we were slammed with all the different tours and investigations and expansions and stuff that we were doing and so um, we were excited to be able to to bring it back we also talked about a couple of the cool things that we've got going on uh, right now and what's going to be coming up in the uh, new start of the year but um, you know it's to me I, I love it when we have the guests on and we're able to talk about history and personally there's nothing I love more than local history absolutely and um, you know the local history that we're going to be talking about tonight um, you know we did briefly mentioned last week about our partnership with rugby and how, uh, you know, how great that's been for this year. And uh, so the guest we'll be talking to tonight um, is perfectly situated to help us discuss that even further. Yes. And so uh, just want to say hello to the, everyone over in the chat room over here. If you have any questions for us or tonight's guest, we want to make sure that we get to those. So if you don't mind, just put them in all caps and uh, feel free to put them over there. And we will definitely make sure to address them as, uh, as we go throughout the show. So before we do bring on tonight's guest, we do want to uh, talk a little bit about some of the really cool things that we've got going on over the next little bit. Cause I mean, we're coming up on Christmas just really, Fast. really quick. Yeah. So, um, so as we'd mentioned before, we uh, are award-winning ghost walks that we do here, our Christmas ghost walks, to be more specific, here at uh, Huntsville and here at the jail. We're running those every weekend through the month of December, and that will also run the weekend after Christmas. So um, we do still have some tickets available for that. It's a two-hour walk, one hour throughout the town of Huntsville, and then um, 45 minutes to an hour, and then another hour inside the jail where we tell you the uh, the history and the hauntings and show you some of the paranormal captures that have been captured here at the jail. So you can get those tickets. We do limit those to 10 people per walk. And again, those are at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Friday nights and 6 p.m. Eastern on Saturday nights, providing we don't have an investigation or something already on the schedule. Right, right. And uh, one of the things we do like to mention also is, uh, you know, everybody talks about Sally. She's she's a great mascot. Um, and obviously we love her a lot. But uh, she obviously she had a pass before she came here. Uh, the vet said she was about um, a year old when when we found her. Um, but one of the things that we wanted to do very quickly um, was was to have Sally fixed. And so we did that through an organization here in Scott County 
called For the Love of Paws. Um, unfortunately, Scott County does not really have a humane society per se or a, an animal shelter, um, but For the Love of Paws does a great job here in Scott County. Um, they provide um, reasonably, reasonably priced spay and neuter um, uh, services for local people. Um, also, if you find a stray, kind of like what we did with Selly, um, they'll take care of the cost or, or give you a reduced cost to spay and neuter them. Um, basically what they do is they put them on a neuter commuter, they take them down to Knoxville, um, they get all their shots and everything, and uh, it really helps the um, the animal population here in Scott County. So it is something that we're very passionate about here because Scott County does have um, a, a very, uh, it has an epidemic right now of lost animals and, and animals that are just dropped off here in Scott County. So long story short, what we'd like to do is, uh, since it is the spirit of giving, if you do feel like giving, um, for the love of paws here in Scott County is our local um, uh, animal connection, if you will. So if, you, if you're in the spirit of giving, please consider donating um, any amount to for the love of paws, because that does allow them to uh, keep the spay and neuter uh, costs down for local people. So um, Miranda's putting all the information up on uh, up on the screen right now. And um, if, if you do decide to donate, please uh, just tell them that Selly sent you. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, you can definitely find more information out about them. If you go to the Facebook page, which we do have up there, you can do a quick click quick click on the uh, link there in the comment section or but just go check them out on the for love of pause page there on uh, the Facebook page and that's got all the information as far as donating but also just following along because if you're if you're uh, somewhat local or if uh, you know someone who is and you see an animal on there that because um, um, I think they post animals that are up for adoption, right? They, they do. For so moms. they work, they, yeah, they work closely with, um, from, for, with Morgan County, with the MoCo animal um, shelter there. That is the closest one to us, but it is one county over. So for the love of paws does work with MoCo uh, pets or MoCo mutts there in, um, in Morgan County. So they do share animals that are up for adoption, but um, you know, like I said, our local connection here for any type of animal rescue or any type of animal help is for the love of paws. And um, like I said, if you have it in your Hard to donate a couple bucks. Um, we'd, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, so we definitely took advantage of it with Selly. And uh, like I said, just tell them that Selly sent you. Yeah. And we're actually working on some some really cool fundraising ideas for uh, for those organizations that is going to involve Selly. She told us directly that was something that she wanted us to do. And so we're, uh, we're working on that. So that'll probably carry over into the new year. Mm -hmm. So definitely be on the lookout for that sort of thing. Yep. Um, also, um, just want to make sure. Okay. So another thing that I want to uh, pull up, um, give me one second to pull this up because I lost my page whenever I pulled that up. Um, so speaking of, of Morgan County, we're part actually participating in a raffle for a local student who is going to, I got the wrong page here, uh, who goes to Petros Joiner School. And so we have donated, um, we've donated four tickets to an escape room experience, as well as, ah, there we go. Let me get that pulled up. Uh, the An escape room experience, as well as tickets to, um, uh, four tickets, I believe, to our flashlight tour. Mm -hmm. And this is for a student there, an eighth grade student at Petros Joiner. It is a very, very small school. And so the, this fundraiser goes, um, it goes back to the basketball program there, which, which is a much needed school resource there for, for these small rural, rural schools here in, in um, Morgan County, Scott County. Um, but um, a friend of ours, Vanessa Clement, she's running for basketball queen this year. And so you can actually go in and um, purchase some of these raffle tickets. I think they're $5 a ticket. And uh, we'll share this here on the jails page, but it's got all of the different information. So you can purchase a $5 ticket to win a chance for four tickets to the escape room, as well as the flashlight tour. And it's got all the information where you can go and you can purchase those tickets at, but we're really excited. They're also taking cash donations. And so we're very excited to be a sponsor of this and uh, to be helping uh, Pete Ross Joyner and uh, Vanessa Clement out. I mean, she's a phenomenal student there at PJ and uh, to, be an honor roll student, an A student, and be able to do all that and be a, a star basketball player, 
that's so cool. So we're really excited to do that. We'll have all that information posted on our page if you would like to take a chance at the raffle. Yep. All right. Well, thank you for listening to that. Um, so now we're really excited to kind of talk to our guests tonight. Um, you know, as we mentioned last week, um, as, and most of you know, earlier this year, we uh, formed an amazing partnership with Historic Rugby Incorporated. And it's something that we're very proud of. Uh, the history of rugby is absolutely fascinating. If you haven't been there, please consider coming to one of our lantern tours or go visit rugby during the day. Um, but uh, it just has an amazing history. And we're really excited to pull up Annie. Yes, Miss Annie Pander Patterson. <laughs> Operations Manager, came and talk. Operations Manager there at Historic Rugby. Welcome, Annie. Thank you. Great to be here tonight. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And, you know, a, a lot of the, the guests that are a lot of the viewers that we have know that we have formed this partnership with rugby. Some of them have actually taken advantage of the Lantern Tours or have visited during the day. But um, can you tell us a little bit about kind of yourself and your background and how you became associated with Historic Rugby Incorporated? Yeah, sure can. So, I've actually, um, you know, I live in South Scott County in Glen Mary. So uh, I've since 86, I guess. And so, you know, rugby was always a place I visited. And then my partner and I have a art and antique business and we've started doing shows at rugby. We've had a shop in rugby for 20 years. Um, and I'd worked for uh, a lot of years with the local Habitat affiliate here. Um, and when I kind of uh, left that position and thought I'd be doing kind of the art antique thing full time. Then they needed a director at Historic Rugby, which I wasn't really willing to do, but I said I'd help with day to day stuff mm -hmm. um, for about six months. And that was about four years ago. Um, <laughs> and so, um, it is just it's just a great community to be a part of. And uh, and and it's it's been a good a good fit with just some of the skills that I had and uh, and what they were needing at the time. So it's worked out well. Well, I just I just want to interject. I mean, the, this partnership between us and rugby, the people there and it's it's just been I echo your sentiments there because it's just been something that's been so warm and welcoming and and great for us we couldn't think of a better group to partner with mm -hmm. exactly and you know um you know rugby is one of those places that has that reputation um and and for years we've always kind of struggled with how do we how do we tell the story of of uh of rugby you know how, how do we kind of contain that that haunted without getting too weird with it you know <laughs> yeah because <laughs> no, um, right. yeah, we you know you get inquiries from all over the place and mm -hmm. and uh and you know you try and do research on groups that were wanting to come and do stuff in rugby and it was like yeah no not going there <laughs> um, and, and so, yes yeah so you know one of the great things that has happened in this past year is is our partnership with you all because um you know the the big thing for us has always been, um, you know, how do, how do you tell the story in the context of the history? Mm -hmm. um, and, and you all get that. And, and, uh, and that's, that's such an important piece to what we do. Mm -hmm. um, Cause you, you, uh, you want to take care of, of both sides of that story. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And and, yeah. to, and that's one of the things, obviously, because I'm, I'm not local. I've, I've, you know, my first experience with rugby was really when I came up here to visit Miranda and she took me over there a couple of years ago. But what I love about the villagers and the, the people that work there and are associated with rugby is every single one, every single person loves the history. They love telling the history. They love being immersed in it. And, you know, that's why I think we we have such a great fit and it's such a great partnership because, you know, that's kind of our philosophy as well. Um, you know, we may not have been born there and I, I certainly don't have ties there, you know, through an ancestry line or anything like that. But, you know, to be able to tell this amazing story of this village and just really what it encompassed to me is just fascinating. And every person that you meet in rugby has that same feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really a unique community. And I think, you know, that that's part of one of the things that that I, I think um, that, that we've talked about some is that the, the folks that are there really do love being there. And I think that's been consistent for, you know, decades, mm -hmm, um, yeah. which is why it's such kind of an an active place, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, 
uh, and and when we you know we we talk about like when we do our ghostly gatherings and stuff and the, you know there's there there's the there's the living spirits and and then there's the others and mm -hmm. uh, and um, you know we say that one of the things that may happen is people hang around where they were happiest and uh, yeah. um, and you know a lot of people rugby's always kind of been that haven or sanctuary uh, for folks and um, and so you know that it it seems to be a good place. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And and I really love the fact that, that of what you do. You mentioned the ghostly gatherings, and this is something obviously that rugby puts on um, along with your, your Christmas uh, events as well and some events through the year. Um, but you you have done a great job of really, you know, marrying those two components, the history as well as the paranormal. Um, I know we, we went over there for uh, a couple of the events that you had this year, and uh, it, it, it's it's unlike any other place that we've been to, you know, most people either focus on the history or they focus on the paranormal. Um, but that's what I, I love about rugby as well is it, it, it marries those two so well in everything that you do. Yeah. And it, it and, you know, I think, um, uh, you know, rugby has been, been de described as kind of a thin place, um, <laughs> you know, and, and, and some people get that and some people don't. Um, but it is uh, it, like like I said, our partnership with you all and and the respect that you have for 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 all sides of that story is is I think what makes it work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And just in case, uh, just in case some people don't know what that means, which a lot of our folks in here do, can you talk a little bit or describe what it means about being a thin place? Um, you know, it, it's uh, the there's been places described as kind of being a thin place, a thin, thin between this world and the next mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and where, where spirits can pass easily in between. Mm -hmm. um, and you can kind of get that sense um, in different places in the world. It's, it, and you know, it, it's a uh, uh, very common in the Irish tradition. Um, um, and, you know, I think rugby is kind of one of those places. I think, you know, a lot of it has, has to do with, maybe our geography it's kind of you know we're right very on the edge of the cumberland plateau mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. on the very very edge <laughs> and uh and just geographically um you know it, it's kind of a, a place that would be prone to that and then you know it ended up being a place that attracted a lot of dreamers mm -hmm. um over the years and so you know we've got kind of a 140 year history of of folks who are are coming to you know, build another life and, and, uh, and find, find a place to find a place, a place to rest and, and, uh, and restore themselves and figure out what's next and, and all of that. And it's, uh, it seems it, and, and so that, that place just seems to be very restorative. It does. It, it does. You know, one of the things I thought was, was really cool when we had some of the villagers on one of our tours, um, it was described so perfect by one of the villagers when they said that, um, you know, they're not really sure about the spirits that are there, but rugby and you can be completely alone, but rugby just feels full and, and busy. You know, it always feels like there's somebody there, even when it's quiet and alone. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And so, and y'all just wrapped up your, your Christmas events, right? For this season? Exactly. We sure did. We mm -hmm. sure did. Yeah. We do uh Christmas at rugby the first two weekends and two first two Saturdays in December every year. And uh, that was a great event again this year. Um, you know, we added some carriage rides this year and we had a really good turnout. So mm -hmm. yeah. And, and uh, it would be a good segue. Um, you know, we had some <laughs> exciting stuff this year, had some exciting things happen. We so. did. We did. So just to kind of add to that, the whole Christmas conversation that we've got going on, um, it, it was it was interesting. We met with you a couple of weeks ago to to give you an item um, that we were happy to help facilitate the return of. Uh, so for those of you who have not read uh, the last couple of posts that we made on this, um, about four weeks ago, um, one of our friends and fellow paranormal investigators, Chastity Long, she acquired a book 
that was originally in the library there in Rugby. Now, the, his, the, the uh, Thomas Hughes Library was built in 1882, and um, about se there were 7,000 volumes that were donated or books that were donated to this library. And what's fascinating about it is there was only seven of those original books that were missing. And one of them was returned here in time for the Christmas season because, and what really makes it special is that it's actually a Christmas book. It was written in 1870. Um, it's called Diamonds and Rubies uh, or The Home of Santa Claus. And we were very fortunate that we were able to help facilitate the return of this historic book. Yeah, and I, I think that's just such a neat, you know, because it passed through a lot of hands to get to yes, us. Yes, it did. And, uh, and you know, the um, uh, so so we were able to have it out at our at our second uh, second Christmas at Rugby tour and kind of showcase that, um, you know, the 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 library is is such an interesting mm -hmm. gem, and yes. uh, when you all brought it back, I, you know. I was so excited. I was trying to be kind of, you know, pretty professional, kind of, you know. <laughs> I was, I was excited. Um, and then uh, 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 Lindsay, who works, who does a lot of our PR stuff for us, you know, she said, I need a quote from you about the book. And I was like, I totally nerded out. <laughs> like, that was, like, I, I was like, I was, uh, you know, I, I like, Benita, who's who's a resident there in the village, you know, you have got to see what happened. And um, and then like some other people walked up and I'm like, guess what? And they're like, you got a contractor for the cafe. I'm like, no, we better. <laughs> one, of the, one of the missing books is back, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So it, it was really exciting. It really was. And for us as well, you know, when we first received it, it's just a small book. It's just a children's book. It was, um, but the amount of history that's just in the front cover, the picture that Miranda has up there right now, this has the original rugby stamp on it, uh, you know, um, and, and that's just, it, it's incredible to think that you're holding something that somebody from the 1880s um, actually sat in red, you know, some of the ears are, or some of the pages are dog-eared and stuff. And um, it's this very tangible piece of history, this tactile piece of history that, that we got to, to hold and help facilitate the return of. Um, and, and to your point, going into the rugby library, if, if y'all watching have not been to the rugby library, you have to go um, come on a lantern tour. If you can't make that go during a day tour. Um, but it is, you walk into this building and it is absolutely immersive um, from a historical context. Um, everything is original. The original books are there, the tables, the doors, the key that we use to unlock the door. Uh, it, it's just a fascinating location. And so many first editions mm -hmm. of books. I know, I think I read in the, the article, um, and I, wa I wasn't aware of that, that there was no book in there that was published later than 1890. Mm -hmm. And so that's just, to me, I mean, it's just what a beautifully preserved time capsule of not just a time capsule, but of such amazing pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was, it was kind of neat. Cause like the first thing Benita did, cause it, at one point they kind of, you know, books had been added later and then they had gone in and kind of called those out. So the first thing Benita did when she got that was flip it open to see if it had the original catalog number inside, which it did, you know, and, and the other thing that makes it special, um, is that it's a children's book uh -huh. um, yes. because a lot of our, the children's books that were a part of that library um, because there was a school next door, the children's books are the ones that got used the most. Uh -huh. And, and so, you know, some of them, you know, have fallen apart and we've got those in special cases. They aren't, you know, on the shelves anymore, missing pages, whatever, whatever. So the children's books are really special because um, you know, we, the, the ones we had were very worn um, and children's books, our library, any library do not last as long. You know? Exactly. And, Please go on. Sorry. Oh, no, no. And so, so, you know, for us to get this piece back, and it's a Christmas story. It was just like <laughs> the best. It was. It was. And, and for those who don't know, this was um, the first lending library in the Southeast United States. So to actually have this collection that is so complete from a lending library is, is absolutely fantastic, right? And because you have people not only from, from the village of rugby at the time using these books, but people from the local communities as well could go in and, and get these books and they could take them out. And the fact that it's such a complete collection really every time I go in, it, it just blows my mind. Uh, yeah. There's not more missing. Yeah. 
And that was yeah. going to be my 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 next question. Actually, do you know when they quit uh, using that as a lending library? Um, well, you know, the school was next door until like the 1950s. I think 51 maybe was when the school when there was still a school next door. Okay. Um, but I don't think they had a librarian in there. And and then the library just sat open. I mean, it wasn't even yeah. locked, you know, and, and anybody could just go in and get a book but everybody knew to bring it back. Mm -hmm. That's and what's so incredible. Exactly. Cause I seem like I remember my dad talking about um, because he would have been down in the Coal Hill Glen mm -hmm. Mary area. Mm -hmm. I remember him go talking about going to that at some oh, point. Yeah. In time. It was like in the fifties or sixties. Yeah. Yeah. And they would like, uh, you know, the, the Glen Mary school and the school down at, at, uh, at Elgin. I mean, that was kind of a field trip for them. You know, I mean, they would just go out there, even though no one was like tending the buildings at that time. I mean, there were people kind of keeping an eye on things, but there wasn't like a librarian or, you know, they they could just go in and get a book. And but you damn sure brought it back. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah, really, that's, right. that's you what know? you did. Yeah. It wasn't yours. Yeah. So you brought it back. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So that, that's that. It's it's really kind of neat. Really, mm -hmm. really neat. So yeah, it was, and. It was, and like you said, it was the first the, it was the first free public lending library in the South. Um, you know, and there were there were libraries that had subscriptions, um, but this was the first free public library. And it was probably also the first kind of public works where the, the general contractor was a woman. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, because yeah. uh, the, the, the family that the gentleman that had the contract, um, he was married and uh, I think they had four or five children. And he had a heart attack and died after the foundation was done. And so so she served as the general contractor to finish that library. So and it's it's um, having been in construction. It's an amazing building. Um, just a the fact that the books has, have stayed as well preserved as they are, you know, with no heat and air, no, you know, no controls, really. Mm -hmm. um, but it was designed in such a way that you know, the ventilation and the airflow would preserve the books. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, I've been up in that attic and underneath that building and it is, you know, it is as dry as a bone. It's just, uh, it, it was just so, so well built. Yeah. It just, it just a testament to really everything about it. And that's the original buildings that are still standing there in rugby, um, you know, same concept. Uh, you know, obviously there's been a little structural things that you've had to maintain um, yeah. there with historic rugby Inc. But um, you know, generally speaking, these are intact buildings looking exactly as they did in the 1880s, still preserved as they were in the 1880s. And again, that's one of the things that makes rugby so fascinating. Um, yeah. and, and just to clarify for those watching, uh, historic rugby is a nonprofit. So mm -hmm. all of the funds that they get from things like the ghostly gatherings or their Christmas, um, uh, cr uh, their Christmas events or any of their festivals, this is just money that's go This is the money that how they raise money to go back into preserving these buildings. Yeah. yeah. And, and just as an example, like, like with the library, you know, one of the things that, so, so we had several years ago, we had a, a new, uh, fire suppression system put in, you mm -hmm. know, and it's, uh, it's, you know, it was a $25,000 expense to have this fire suppression system, air monitoring system, you know, and it just killed me that we had to drill holes to put this yeah. stuff, you know, it's like, oh, um, but, you know, then, then part of the system has to be, you know, kept at 70 degrees. Well, you know, that building doesn't have any heat or anything in it. So we've, you know, had to like enclose this little closet and run this little heater in the winter. And, you know, and, and so, when we talk about the money that we raise and donations that we're always trying to get, you know, it goes to help things like pay those electric bills and pay for right. the servicing on that type of a system mm -hmm. and, you know, um, insurance, you yeah. know, yeah. which is, which, you huge. know, as everybody knows is huge, you know? So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but yeah, cause, cause like with the library and that, that collection, you know, there isn't like any one book in there that's worth a lot of money. Um, but the value is that it's in the collection. Yes. It's probably the most complete collection of Victorian era era literature, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so that's where the value is. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. 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 And just, I mean, I'm always fascinated being from the area, just 
the things that are that are there in rugby that you you wouldn't think about when you come to rural Appalachia or come up on the Cumberland Plateau. I mean, just going into Thomas Hughes's home and seeing the artwork that's inside of there. You know, if you're if you're a literary nerd or anybody that you know <laughs> follows, you know, the this sort of thing. I mean, just knowing that that's in there in a little village in rural Appalachia up on the Cumberland Plateau, it's such a treasure. And you yeah. were, it's unexpected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like walking into Christ Church, you oh. know, there in rugby, oh. you know, which is like, uh, you know, it, it is such a warm and inviting um, chapel, you know, yes. when you go in there, that sanctuary is, is really amazing. And, 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 you know, when you think about what they did at that time with what they had to work with, um, it, it's, uh, it's pretty impressive. It, it really is. And again, yeah. back to the, the historic preser preservation piece of it, you know, you, the, the original paint is inside this chapel uh, yeah. built in 1887, which is fascinating. Mm -hmm. And we have actually have a question over here. Um, Candace Wallace says, sounds like the local builders were pretty talented. Do you know anything about them? Um, so, you know, it, it's interesting, like the like the pews and all that kind of stuff in Christchurch were all made from, you know, walnut trees that they cut kind of within within the site. And so um, there, it was kind of a combination of folks that lived um, that already lived in the area who, you know, could do the logging and do the sawing and that kind of stuff. And then um, like Christchurch, um, there was a gentleman who came his, you know, we talk about rugby being an English village, but it was really there, there was a lot of other nationalities there as well. And so mm -hmm. like the carpenter who built Christchurch was Cornel Cornelius Onderdonk, mm -hmm. you know, probably not English. Um, <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, and, and so, you know, they had, they had some skilled folks that were kind of part of, part of the village and then also, you know, kind of using the, the local labor as well. Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, and then there was, you know, just a, a couple other carpenters um, from kind of the Jamestown Allert area that did a lot of work over there. So just really mm -hmm. skilled folks. Yeah. And people can actually come and they can still go to church at this church on a Sunday if they want. Exactly. Exactly. It's an active congregation Sunday at 11. So yeah. and weddings and all kinds mm -hmm. of, of things are held mm -hmm. there. Yep. Yeah, and and that's also something that a lot of people may not may not realize about rugby is that it is indeed a living village. When we talk about the people who are there, we're not just talking about the spirits. We're talking <laughs> about right. the uh, the live people that's there because of it being an actual living village. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's about what I think 50, 60 re residents now. About eighty one? residents, eighty oh, okay. full time residents. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So going back to Miranda's comment about the spirited individuals that are there, um, you know, a lot of people are obviously watching for the paranormal aspect of it, but uh, can you tell us um, maybe one or two of the experiences that you've had in any of the, the buildings there in rugby? Um, well, yeah, there's probably been one or two. Um, <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, the thing is, is about, you know, with, with rugby is, is, uh, um, you know, there's never anything malevolent there. You know, sometimes it's, uh, it, it, it feels like um, uh, they're just, you know, someone's wanting to be noticed. It's Absolutely. like, don't forget, I'm still here, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and so, you know, we've had, uh, you know, Newberry House, of course, is very, you uh, is is probably our most well known of of our buildings and part of that is because it's open for lodging and people get to stay there you know mm -hmm. um whereas you know some of the other buildings kingston law the library folks are just in and out and they don't get to spend that concentrated time um you know newberry house is is notorious for its its door slamming and things dropping and um it is uh it is kind of a prankster house and that, you know, we have, because it's listed as B and B we have health inspect, you know, health department comes and inspects twice a year. Um, and so you can, it doesn't matter when you change the batteries in the smoke detectors or the carbon monoxide detectors, they will go off as while the health department is there or the light bulb <laughs> will blow or whatever, you know, um, uh, that she, she's just good for that kind of stuff. So, 
um, yeah, it's kind of every day. It's just um, something, something that we live with, um, you know, and I think, uh, you know, we, we had even had that experience. I think the first time we met um, and we met up in our office and, and our door chime kept going on yes. for no apparent reason. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, and then, and until I think we figured out that there was some, some co family connection possibly going on mm -hmm. there. So, yep. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting when things happen, you're, you're always trying to figure out what has triggered it, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. so. And that's what I love when I come in and when we meet with you all, because just hearing, being able to share some of the things that we've experienced on the tours or some of our guests or investigators have experienced and then hearing what you all who are in there every day have experienced since we talked to you last. That's always uh -huh. probably one of my favorite things when we have our yeah. meetings. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's really, it's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and what's interesting is where, where Annie's office is, it's actually in the schoolhouse there in rugby. It's on the second floor of the schoolhouse. And uh, so when we do the tours, we have to go up to get the keys. So, you know, we, we open the door, we go in and get the keys. We're the only people in the building. Um, and there's been a couple of times where we've heard some stuff. The lights mm -hmm. have, have been on when uh, we know we turn them off. Um, when we get Or they the, don't come on. Or they don't come on. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, when we're down in the schoolhouse, which is is directly underneath your office. We hear things running back and forth mm -hmm. when we know that there's nobody up there. Uh, so it's definitely at an active location where you're at. Yeah. 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 A there's lot of times when I come in that back, that back stairway going up. So there's also a front, the, the original front stairway in the schoolhouse and I'll come in that back door and you'll hear somebody run down that front staircase. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. so, yep. Yeah. I would swear sometimes when, when, at least when I'm doing tours in areas that somebody is trashing your all's office upstairs. Mm -hmm. And oh, so I'm it. always, that explains yeah. my office. <laughs> it, it does. And I'm always happy whenever I go to uh, unlock the door or to lock the door back and put the alarm on that, at least there's nothing in the hallway. That's <laughs> not right. Exactly. Yeah, that's good. Now, uh, Candace also asks, she says, do books get moved around too? And she would definitely haunt a library. <laughs> we'll, we'll be watching for you. <laughs> no, I mean, we've never noticed books get moved around in the library um, that, that we know of. Um, now, I know, Annie, you mentioned last time we had our meeting last week that your chair had been moved across your office. Uh -huh. um, so that's uh, a <laughs> yeah. little interesting. Yeah, yeah, that has happened. But, you know, the 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 library, I, I wonder if uh, if part of it is, you know, um, kind of on both sides, there's a lot of respect for that building. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, yeah. I think so. so. Yeah. Yeah. I know some of the common things we've experienced there, definitely a smell. And we do smell this throughout the entire village is like a smell of sweet tobacco. We smell that quite a bit um, there. And then um, I know on one of Chris's tours, one of the chairs got pulled out from under the table, um, which right. was interesting. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of uh, the shadow figure. There, there's been uh, shadow figures seen on there. the front step there of the library. Yeah, uh, I know uh, Chrissy, who works there at Rugby, mm -hmm. said that she's seen a shadow figure there. So is Brian. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And we, we smelled something there on the front steps. But yeah, um, as far as really activity inside, um, you know, we've had a few different things, Candace. But um, to Miranda's point, the, the very first in our tour, uh, light, lantern tour that I had, uh, we were all congregating inside the library and um, there was nine of us on the tour and they've got some ch uh, a table with some chairs and one of the chairs kicked back from the table about an inch. Um, the guy standing close to it about, he levitated about a foot <laughs> off the ground, um, said a couple of choice words and uh, kind of made for the exit pretty quickly after that. Um, but uh, <laughs> that's really the only thing that's happened in the library, as far as I know. Um, Dream Interpretations by Dee Dee asks, has anyone ever quit their job at this location because of the activity? Um, we had uh, one building actually when when our shop was in the board of aid mm -hmm. um uh we had uh someone who would fill in for us once in a while um and she did it twice and she <laughs> said that that was enough um because it was just too much kind of going on there 
um, you know, that was that was one. And, and, and that building was really, you know, was interesting because when you you come in the door and, and there's a stairway that goes up to the archives, historic yeah. rugby archives. And, um, you know, I remember being in there one time I was on the first floor and I heard the door open. Someone go up those stairs and then distinctly heard them sit like in an old <laughs> office chair and lean back because you could hear it creak. And, you know, I thought it was our friend George. And I'm like, George? <laughs> but, you know, it wasn't like, and, uh, you know, no response. And so I was just quiet for a minute. And then, you know, I heard that it was like somebody stood up. And I heard just heard that office chair go chunk, 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 like those old ones did, you know. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a, that's that's one where, yeah, we that person did not come back. Now, we've had people... Um, <laughs> choose not to stay in lodging, you know, um, cause they'll pull up and they'll be like, Oh no, 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 no. Can't do that. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Great questions guys. Thank you all so much. If anyone has any last minute questions, go ahead and, and get those in here. Um, cause it is, uh, we've got 20 minutes here mm -hmm. left. So definitely get, put those in the comments if there's anything that that you care to ask. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just to talk about some of the other buildings, to your point uh, earlier, Newberry, because you have um, Newberry's Lodging, Percy, Pioneer. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's different options for lodging if, if you exactly. when, when everybody comes to rugby. And there you uh, go. yeah. <laughs> um, and it, it, it is interesting that they all have some type of a, a reputation. Obviously, Newberry is the one that most people want to stay in because um, it does have that direct link to, you know, Charles Oldfeld and uh, people, you know, seeing him and perceiving him around uh, pretty frequently um, there in Newberry. But, uh, you know, just the, just that the other ones have that same reputation or is very interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Pioneer House um, has, has, you know, there's, you know, it, that's the oldest building in rugby. Um, mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, that house we get, we get uh, there, there's some, you know, we get some reports from there. It's also where um, mm -hmm, now his name escapes me. Tom T. Hall wrote oh. uh, by the time I get to Memphis. Is that his song? Yeah. Anyway, okay. um, he, you know, he wrote, he was staying in Pioneer Cottage mm -hmm. when he wrote that song. Um, okay. so, you know, we have a really varied history, um, uh, but, but Pioneer is, is, uh, is like I said, the oldest building and where a lot of the, um, uh, they called it the asylum, uh, mm -hmm. which is just basically, you know, where they all stayed, um, and they would have pallets on the floor and all of that. They'd cram all the, all the second and third sons in there <laughs> before <laughs> anything was built, you know, so, yeah. yep. So, and then Percy Cottage is a reconstruction of, uh, right. of, of one of the, one of the original homes there. Mm -hmm. So, yep. and you know, for me personally, that's the one where, when my sister and I stayed, uh, had some interesting things happen. I mean, we, we had a, a couple of things in Newberry footsteps and stuff, but, uh, Percy Cottage was the one that for us anyway, um, seemed to be the most active that night that we were there. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, and we're we're kind of scrolling through the the rugby page here that's got all the different lodging options and and events. I mean, their website has got all kinds of really cool information. I mean, it's chock full of information of things that they've got going on and, and how you can uh, book book your overnight stay. Now, if you're if you're wanting to do an investigation, that is different, and and you go through our website on that. But uh, to spend the night for their lodging and stay there all of that is done through rugby's page. Yeah. And we, yeah and can, you, can you talk just a little bit about like what your tours involve? Sure. Cause I know you've Absolutely. got different, different, uh, you know, different ones that you all do. Yes. Yes. So, um, so like we'd mentioned before, you know, if you, if you come to rugby, you can take the tours, uh, during the day that, that encompasses the history and such. Um, we do all the after dark stuff, which, uh, would be the lantern tours. We have two different tours for that one we call the downtown tour, which covers a lot of these downtown homes that's here in rugby. And then we have the North village cemetery, North village and cemetery tour, which includes, uh, Uffington house, which was Madam Hughes's home, as well as the old Tabard Inn burn site. 
and then um, the uh, the walk that goes down. And it's a pretty extensive walk that goes down to the cemetery. And so with those two tours, we just opened the cemetery tour in October. We've been doing the uh, downtown village tour since May. And so we do, you can, we encourage you to take both, mm -hmm. but um, we definitely encourage you to take the downtown village tour first because that covers a lot more of the history because we've had a lot of folks that come that that maybe don't know the history entire history of rugby mm -hmm. and it's very important we do give an abbreviated history um there but because we're not going into all the downtown area it's a little bit different and we want to include something different on each of the tours right. um we talk a little bit more about victorian burial customs on that one we also talk about appalachian burial customs um, because you did have the marriage of the two with the Victorian uh, British and then also the Appalachians. Mm -hmm. And then we offer something. And with those, we share the, the paranormal as well as the history. Mm -hmm. And um, we offer something a little more immersive if you are into the paranormal. Now we do give, um, we do have uh, K2 meters and stuff that we do take on the lantern box. That way, if people experience anything, um, they can uh, do a little mini session communicating with the spirits. But for a more full immersive experience, we offer a three hour guided ghost hunt. And with that, you get to go inside of um, New, uh, excuse me, not Newberry, um, Kingston Lyle, the school, the library, and Uffington House. And so we bring all of our tools out. We encourage people to bring cameras, audio, any tools they have, and then either myself or Christy lead those. And that's a more full immersive experience. Mm -hmm. And then if you are a um, professional investigator or if you've gone on investigations before, have your own equipment and um, feel so inclined to stay the majority of the night, which would be from 8.30 to 3, you can come in, bring your tools and basically we are just on site to uh, answer any questions, help if there's ever an issue or anything. Um, you know, you're there on your own doing the uh, investigation of the locations that we mentioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you can couple that with these great lodging options yeah. at, at Rugby, which we encourage you to do because that way you can stay in the house. Um, mm -hmm. It really kind of investigate that house while you're there, um, you know, do the investigation from eight to three and then you have the house for the rest of the night. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as Annie said, there's there's just so much activity in all these different houses. Um, I know when we talked to, to Chrissy, who does the, you know, the upkeep of the houses there, she routinely has stories of, of stuff that has happened in all of the locations. So. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's, I think, out of all the teams and stuff that we've had, we've only had one team that has not actually lodged at rugby of all the mm -hmm. investigations we've had so mm -hmm. far. Um, now we are, you know, because we're going into, um, the darker season, the colder months, uh, being up on the Cumberland Plateau, the weather sometimes gets a little bit unpredictable. And so I know rugby has a closed season and you can give us those dates. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be closed in like the visitor center and, and, and the, uh, the commissary, they actually close this Sunday. Um, we will still do group tours if we've got 10 or more folks. We'll still do group tours, um, keeping in mind that those, uh, you know, like Kingston Lyle and the library are not heated. Um, and so um, it's very cold and that those parts are very quick because uh, it is cold. Um, you know, I went into Kingston Lyle this afternoon and I think it was 30 degrees colder in there than it was yeah. outside. You know, it's like, yeah. Those it. buildings just hold that cold because oh, we yeah, yeah yeah even being climate do. controlled here it can sometimes we'll opt to eat outside at lunchtime <laughs> just because <laughs> it's so it. much colder inside the building yeah um, yeah and and so um and then we reopen again but our lodging is open all winter long except for the upstairs in newberry um mm -hmm. uh just because it's too expensive to heat to be quite honest yeah um uh and and then we reopen again in the mi middle of march mm -hmm. so and so we're schedule. we're hoping to try to do something you know um during those times because right. the nights are longer and uh and i know a lot of you paranormal investigators that's watching get a lot of activity when it's colder and enjoy that 
that opportunity. So, mm -hmm. um, so we're working on some different options. We've met with uh, Annie and, and her team on this, and we talked a little bit about it last week, but basically for those, those closed months from, uh, we were talking from January 2nd up until I think what, March 10th? March. Four, 14th, right? 14th. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we were talking about from that point of time, um, extending the time during the guided ghost hunts. So instead of three hours, you'll get four hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, instead of just getting Uffington, Kingstone, Lyle, the school and the library, adding uh, a couple of those locations, providing that, uh, um, you know, there's nobody staying in that lodging. We're still working the dates out and everything, but you would get those on the guided ghost hunt and then also um, offering the paranormal investigations instead of that being a Thursday through Sunday thing, it'd be seven days a week. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. And, and I wanted to mention too, you know, you'd mentioned that Uffington house is, is part of that. And I think, you know, that house um, is, is just kind of, you know, qu quintessential in the rugby story with the, um, Thomas is Hugh's mother, you know, coming here in her 80s and, you know, spending the last, you know, seven or eight years of her life um, in in rugby. And, um, you know, they referred to her as Madam Hughes and, you know, all the visitors that she had and just what a host hostess she was, um, mm -hmm. you know, and with her granddaughter, Emily. Um, and, and, it, it, and it's just kind of such a neat part of the story. And, mm -hmm. and kind of showing that family support. But, you know, mm -hmm. our, our, our introductory film that we show at the visitor center is called The Power of the Dream. And, um, and you know, that, that family was so supportive mm -hmm. of what was happening um, and, and, uh, and just everything that they kind of put on the line, you know. Yeah, they did. Yes. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, they, they were not necessarily a family that had a lot of luck. <laughs> You know, no, they didn't. Some, they had some real tragedies in their family, and wow. uh, and yet they kind of persevered and and um and you know just kind of you know brought their fortitude with them to deal with all of that and brought it with them to to the to the edge of the plateau to try and make this happen. And I think you know some people refer to to rugby as a, a failed utopia, but I think if you look at what it's what has happened over the years. Uh -huh. Um, you know, we might just be slow to mature, you know, <laughs> it's kind of, kind of I love it. Annie. That's great. There. That yeah. is great. So, um, and, and I, I, to your point, I love Uffington. I, you know, yeah. When, yeah. when we're there, the history, just, just being, be able to go in and be immersed in that history. Um, and then from the paranormal aspect, we've had some great evidence, uh, you know, I was leading that, uh, that guided ghost hunt. And I just, we we're downstairs and I said, um, you know, do you miss England? And just, it sounded like a full size human just running through the upstairs. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. and, and I think most of the paranormal teams that have been there have had some, um, some type of yeah. communication at Ovington. So it's, it's a great yeah. place. Great. great yeah. House. And, and, you know, after the Hughes family was there, there were other families that lived mm -hmm. there. So it's had, you know, it's been occupied a lot mm -hmm. of its life and, yeah. And the other thing that's kind of neat about it is it's actually three homes that were put together. Yes. And, uh, and so, you know, there's just kind of so much there, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And, and, and another thing that's, that's what's again, really cool about rugby. I mean, you, you had this starting point really essentially there in 18, in the 1880s, but you, you had these layers upon layers to your point. Um, mm -hmm. And it just doesn't, it's not a history or a story that has stopped. It's just right. been adding the layers mm -hmm. have just been added. And that, that to me is just fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause it's, it's not like, you know, 18, the 1880s is all there was. Right. You know? Correct. Yeah. So. Correct. Yeah. And just the fact, I mean, with the importance that um, the, the colony had on the social clubs and the, uh, you know, entertaining and that mm -hmm. sort of thing mm -hmm. that is alive and well there at rugby with the events, the uh, programming and stuff that you guys put on. Can you talk yeah. just a little bit about some of the cool things that you guys have coming up? Next yes. year, yeah. So, like when we do our opening opening weekend, um, uh, we 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 kick off with an Irish road bowling tournament, 
Um, uh, you know, if you ever dreamed of being able to throw a cannonball down the middle of the road, <laughs> that is your opportunity. Um, and then we do that, uh, just, uh, you have the tournament the first weekend and then we'll be doing it every couple weeks, uh, throughout the year. Um, and it's weekend. popular. It's really popular. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, and then that, that weekend, we also, uh, do our opening hikes because the state, uh, we, we're, we're adjacent to the state natural area. And, and so they have a ranger come in once a month and, and lead hikes into the state natural area. Um, and, you know, we have a big British festival that'll be the first weekend in May this year. And that is, you know, we have, we have the, the, British dancers come in and we have all kinds of music and arts and crafts. And that is a really, really fun weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, of course we'll have our, there's various teas throughout the year. Um, the British car show is so much fun that happens in the summer. So, you know, there's just, there's just always, there's, there's a lot of things that are things that are happening. So. And, and the best place where people can find that calendar, is that on the website or? Yes, that'll Facebook? be on the website. Yep. Yep. And okay. we'll be getting all of that updated as we finalize all the dates here. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, and to Candace's uh, comment over there, you know, I never dreamed that uh, that I would say road bowling is something that's popular, but you go to rugby and it is, it's cutthroat too. I mean, they have trophies, they give out trophies, they have teams and team names and all this other stuff. So uh, that's something that I'm going to take advantage of next year is really trying to get in on, on some of that yeah. fun. And, and you mean, know, it's all based, it's this game that's all based on the Irish stealing cannonballs from the English. Um, and then they made a game out of it, you know? And so, uh, so why not? Right. I mean, you know, commit a crime, start a game, you know, there you go. I mean, it's the American way. I mean, <laughs> there you go. Just Gotta pull love all it. those in. <laughs> Gotta love it. And I was going to pull up here. I know you all have one more big event that uh, you've got going on. Um, I was looking to see if I, uh, let's see, where is it here? Where did I see that? Um, and you, and you guys actually, so I was looking at the events. Um, I'm noticing here, you all actually have, the um every irish road bowl that you all do you could have events for it on there correct yeah yeah, yeah. and okay. and we'll be getting that schedule up so we've got the new year's cabaret coming up um these are just an amazing bunch of actors that were all kind of part of the knoxville actors co-op um and have over the years um developed ties in rugby and they they put on this amazing amazing show every new year's um and then i think it's january 13th we've got a chili cook-off mm -hmm. which um <laughs> last year there was so much chili so much good chili and so many people and it is so much fun and we do a silent auction and and uh and that'll be coming up um like i said january 13th mm -hmm. so um we'll be getting those tickets online soon as well so so well fantastic annie thank you so much you know you, hey we, thank you all we just love speaking with you and, and talking you all things to. rugby. And, um, you know, as we said before, this partnership with, with you and Historic Rugby Inc. is just something that we're yeah. extremely proud of. So thank you oh. for that. And and thank you all, because like I said, it, it's something that, that um, uh, we've we have struggled with. It's in and, and, uh, and it is it has been a really good partnership for us. So, oh. yeah, wonderful. Uh -huh. And uh, everyone stay tuned. I know uh we had done some posts and stuff about some different stories. I know there's some more stories and or publicity and stuff that's coming out about uh, about the Christmas book and stuff. So uh, people just Excellent. follow the pages and make sure to keep an eye on that because you just never know what you might see. That's right. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you, Annie. You have a great night. Thank okay, you. you guys too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Um, just so much fun. Wonderful, wonderful people over at Historic Rugby Inc. If mm -hmm. you've not been over there, done one of the daytime tours and got to know some of the folks that work there at rugby, you're really missing out. You need to go over there because there is such a pride and passion for the folks there. And, you know, a, a nonprofit uh, location like that, you have to have that. You have to have mm -hmm. that 
that pride and passion to keep that going. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and what they do is fun. You know, like yeah. I said, the, the, the road bowling, who would have thought, but uh, it actually is a, it's a blast. Their festivals are always a blast. Um, you know, they, they did a, all the stuff for Halloween, just a lot of fun. So um, yeah, go and visit rugby, uh, put all of their festivals on your calendar. If you're in the area, go and visit them, um, visit their vendors that go to these festivals. Um, most of them are local artisans. Um, and so, so, really visit them and, and get some really cool items there uh, at those festivals um, and then stick around for a lantern tour because we love giving the lantern tours. Absolutely. Great things to come with that. We're, we're so excited. And if you want more information, so I did put in the comment section there, if you're looking for information on historic rugby, we actually, we have that up there. The link to it is historicrugby.org. That's all the daytime stuff and your lodging if you're looking for that information. And Historic Rugby on Facebook has all of their different events. And then um, as we have up here on the screen right now, historyhighwayshaunts.com. That's our Facebook page. And um, if you go to that, Website. or yes, excuse me, sorry, our website, you can go to that and it's got a link to our jail page. It's also got a link to our uh, hi uh, historic rugby after dark. And so um, that'll take you to both of those web pages. You can uh, book your overnight investigation. You can also book your lantern tour. Now I do just want to say, because we talked about the extreme climate and stuff, we are offering lantern tours during those months of uh, January to March by appointment only. We are not going to have those on the schedule. So if you have a group of at least four or five or more and you're in the area hiking or just doing something fun in the area, um, you can do a downtown or a uh, cemetery lantern tour. We will have signage up about that. We'll have a lot of information about it. You just need to reach out to us and we'll put that calendar on the schedule. And then we're also going to have, like I said, a chock full calendar of investigations and guided ghost hunts. Mm -hmm. If you want to take, you know, take something like that on, that will be on the historyhighwayshaunts.com page or historic rugby after dark mm -hmm. on Facebook. And you can just message us if you, because we're working with a couple of paranormal investigation teams now that want to do the lodging and the, the investigation. Um, we can, we can work with you on that and help you facilitate that if you don't know where to go. So just message us, email us, uh, call us. That's the easiest way to get in touch with us as well. Um, we'll be happy to answer any of those questions, kind of get you set up with lodging, get you set up with the investigation. Um, you know, the teams that we're speaking with, they're going to do the jail and rugby. So if you want to make a full, you know, couple of days out of it, investigate two locations, we highly encourage you to do so. Uh, the jail is climate controlled, so no issues really with uh, the cold there. So just take advantage of both of these very cool historic locations, um, one of which has awesome lodging options. Yeah, and rugby is only 20 minutes from here at the jail. So, uh, so it's an easy commute and uh, make us a destination and not just a pass through whenever you're coming. Um, I do also want to mention if you've been following the page and if you watched the show last week, we did open our 2024 booking schedule for private paranormal investigations here at the jail. That calendar is also open at rugby as well. But um, with this, you can go on and we are offering a special offer of extended investigation hours through March 10th. Again, taking advantage of those longer nights that we have here. If you book the jail anywhere between January 2nd, or if you book a date for January 2nd through March 10th, you will get the jail from 7.30 p.m. Eastern time to 4 a.m. We are including that three o'clock hour. So you will get a longer time here at the jail and we've opened it for seven days a week. Mm -hmm. So you won't just have to book Thursday through Sunday. You can book any of those dates. Yep. So um, we have that open. We have had some bookings come in already and we do anticipate those uh, booking up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So especially the extended hours, uh, we do anticipate those probably filling up here before the first of the year. And uh, so we've got that. And then the calendar is open through the end of August. And so we will be opening September through the remainder of the year. Probably we're thinking either end of January, February, once we get our official schedule finalized. Yep. And then finally, uh, in January, we will be making another interesting announcement. We think people will really be excited about. So stay tuned for January. We're working on a couple of things here at the jail here in Huntsville. So um, just be uh 
be looking out for that because we're really excited about it. Um, so thank you everybody for watching. Again, um, if you like to donate to For the Love of Paws, please do so. Um, and uh, to the uh, the Petros Joiner charity event that we mentioned at the beginning of the show, um, this is the season of giving. So if you find it in your hearts to, to donate to those two causes, we would be greatly appreciative of that. Um, if you do donate to Love of Paws, please tell them that Sally sent you. Yeah, and also we said it last week, but we'll say it again that that, you know, as content creators and business owners, if you have not liked our Facebook page or our YouTube channel, please go on, like, subscribe, and share that out. Um, it is a free thing that you can do that helps these locations. It helps our algorithm. If you've not given us a Google review on um, Google there under the historic Scott County Jail, we ask that you do that. That helps us get found. And so um, share it out there and please encourage others because, again, it is a a free way that that does help tremendously whenever you're a business owner in getting the word out. Um, and then also Historic Rugby. Go yeah. on and like their Facebook page. And I uh, know they've got a really cool page on Instagram. Again, these folks are busy and uh, love sharing what they do. So you can follow along with that as well. So uh, until next week. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks again to Annie. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. We hope you have a splendid evening. Yeah, we'll see you next Thursday night at 7 p.m. Good night, everybody. Good night. Mm -hmm.